Various sizes of cylindrical lithium-ion cells are available, and this number is expected to expand in the future. Some are designed to be used in basic devices, such as toys and flashlights, while others are primarily used to power portable computers and electric cars. The electric vehicle industry has experimented with a variety of energy storage technologies and eventually came to choose cylindrical LFP battery cells. In today's video, we examine the 2170 and 4680 standards in great detail. The video ends with the view into the future, which includes bigger forms and advancements in cell and pack manufacturing procedures, which will lead to the creation of high-performance energy storage systems in the future. Welcome back to New Vehicle Media, your go-to channel for EV stock. Quick reminder, subscribing's free and liking the video helps YouTube suggest similar content. Comments are loved and featured in upcoming videos. Manufacturers of EVs choose the finest battery cell for each model they produce. For this reason, you may see that most electric vehicle manufacturers end up purchasing from the same vendor, LG Chem. The South Korean manufacturer offers the highest possible degree of efficiency, which is why it goes without saying that both Lucid Motors and Tesla get their supplies from the same provider, LG Chem. Leveraging the company's innovative battery design and flexible production process, EV makers tune the LG Chem cells to meet or surpass all performance objectives for range, energy density, recharge discharge rates, and other metrics. Thus, the EV startups are able to take advantage of the unique cell chemistry of LG Chem's batteries in order to produce the most small but energy dense battery pack form factor imaginable. For the time being, both Tesla and Lucid are integrating the 2170 LFP batteries in their electric vehicles. Tesla, however, said during its battery day that it would be transitioning to a 4680 cylindrical cell in future versions of its vehicles. Tesla and Panasonic seem to have struck an agreement in 2023 for specific battery cells. But what really is the difference between the two? How do the 2170 LFP cells fare in comparison to the 4680? Let's get into the meat of the matter. Since their initial laptop battery-powered electric vehicle, EV batteries have evolved into specialized cells with increased capacity and power. However, in a more compact form, the potential exists that future EVs would ultimately have a longer driving range and will be more affordable for the majority of the population. There has been a decrease in the length of the electrical channel inside each cell as a result of the more modern design, which has led to the 2170 form factor cells lower size and higher power capacity. The number 2170 refers to the fact that each cell measures 21 millimeters in diameter by 70 millimeters in length, and that's how it gets its name. Next in line is a tab-free shingle spiral design that's easier to produce and comes in a package that measures 46 millimeters in diameter by 80 millimeters in length, hence its nickname, the 4680. An improvement in driving range of up to 16% is predicted for the 4680 thanks to its six-fold increase in power and five-fold increase in energy storage. The rationale behind this is that stacking standard battery cells 2170, which every electric vehicle uses to store energy, takes up more space since each cell has a separate layer of coating. Using 4680 cells results in a denser battery pack since there are fewer cells in a given area and even less coating. Beyond the fact that it has more power than its previous incarnation, it is noteworthy since it will become substantially less expensive to build than its predecessor, resulting in more inexpensive electric vehicles. But how does it translate the cooling system of the battery? The issue with big diameter cells is that the heat rejection of the cell increases more quickly than the cell's surface area, making it more difficult to remove heat from the sides of the cell. To address this issue with the 2170 cell, 
producers adhered the cooling snake directly to the cell side. The inception of the electric vehicle industry was marked by a steep learning curve and poor success rate at the outset of manufacturing, as engineers worked to finesse out the issues involved with attaching the cell to the cooling snake, which was a major source of frustration. They did, however, ultimately figure it out. However, with Tesla's transition to the new 4680 cells, the cooling foil's engineering is no longer necessary or relevant. On battery day, Tesla showed how this new large-format 4680 cell can cool itself. The tabless electro design minimizes the internal resistance. If they don't remove the heat out of the edge of the cell, how do they cool the cells? Thanks to its innovative design, the new tabless provides a unique cooling route out of the cell's ends. This means that the electrodes themselves serve as excellent cooling plates, allowing Tesla to draw heat from the core of the cell and exhaust it via the top and bottom of the cell. Therefore, temperature is no longer concentrated in the center of each cell, but is rather concentrated at the top and bottom of each cell. As a result, the cooling snake design must be scrapped in favor of a flat cooling plate design. The learning curve to figuring this out will be steep, but knowing Tesla, they will get there eventually. At first glance, it seems that a battery cell's design goals call for shrinking with each successive cell rather than becoming larger. Since the 4680 cells outperformed the 2170 in terms of power capacity and heat production, it is possible to put more power per pack into the same size battery than was previously possible with the 2170 cells in previous EV models. This implies that just roughly 960 units of 4680 cells are required to occupy the same amount of space as 4,416 units of 2170 cells in the same amount of area, with additional advantages such as cheaper cost per kilowatt hour produced and a considerable boost in power when the 4680 cell pack is used. Considering that Tesla has said that they have enhanced their energy density, they have also suggested that they may be pushing through with another project that will use the same dense energy technology, the energy storage system. During the Q&A session, tied closely to the Q4 2021 quarterly information, Tesla CEO Elon Musk also said he anticipates a switchover of all stationary energy storage products to lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry. The question that many ask is the weight of the battery cells. There is no need to worry about weight since once the energy storage system is mounted, it will remain immobile. The affordability and low cost per kilowatt hour of the LFP, as well as its long life, high power production and safety are its main advantages. Furthermore, since they contain no cobalt, they are among the most ecologically favorable batteries available. As far as the sort of cells that will be used in the energy storage system, it seems that the new, greater density 4680 cells will be employed. Of course, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. Do you believe that 4680 cell types are the way of the future? Or do you believe that there's still a lot of effort to be invested before the EV sector can make the move to a new kind of battery cell? Let us know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Because the batteries are very combustible, there is a growing sense of unease about their safety. In response, a technology such as BYD's blade battery has been developed, and according to Howard Leung, Although the Blade battery is not an extraordinarily high-tech product, it is the safest battery for an electric vehicle. That should wrap things up for today. Keep in mind that subscribing is still free and liking helps YouTube recognize your preferences. Thanks for taking the time to watch and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.